Well, all right, we're back here. We're going to talk about macromolecules, molecules, covalent stuff that's really big, like macro. Now, two of the macromolecules that we're going to talk about today is diamonds and graphite. Now, you've probably heard about diamonds and graphites. Diamond being a very nicely structured um, carbon element that is bonded with other carbons and the thing goes on and on and on and on. Let's take a look at how to draw the structure of diamonds in its diagramic representation. Alright. Now, diamond structure, the structure of diamond, uh, forms in what we call a tetrahedral shape. Now, it's very important for you to know this key word, tetrahedral. That is basically a, a vocabulary word that's used to describe the shape of diamonds and other things of that nature. So let's learn how to draw the shape of uh, a diamond. Now, a diamond is a, actually a macromolecular structure. So it's really huge, uh, a little tiny speck of diamond, um, it has um, billions and billions of atoms in there. And they are all covalently bonded, all right? And the thing goes, uh, the, if I were to draw an, the actual number of uh, carbons for, let's say, a tiny grain of um, diamond, you would take me forever. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a small snapshot, uh, just a sample of the whole macro structure. And these structures have to be drawn in what we call here, again, the tetrahedral shape. So let's get started. Now, I'm going to represent these little things, circles here, as one diamond carbon. Cool? Let's get started. So to draw diamond, you first draw a circle connected with a line to another circle and this second circle will now be a central carbon that means it's going to get connected to three extra carbons and it forms a tetrahedral shape all right um, in class, I'll show you the actual model itself. All right, it forms an actual tetrahedral shape. And tetrahedral simply means that it has four other atoms connected to it in a very um, tripod kind of way, all right? Uh, like a tripod of this camera that's doing the video recording right now, all right? And this is just one tetrahedral shape. But in order to represent diamonds as a macromolecule, you, you kind of have to draw more than one tetrahedral shape. And so I'm going to extend it downwards. All right, here we go. Take this last uh, carbon on the right, and I'm going to draw another line down to another carbon atom. And I'm going to repeat this process up here. Uh, I'll suggest that you draw along with me. Just for practice sake. And then you're going to draw three additional carbons connected to it. Cool? And then what you're going to do is take the last one here and you're going to do the same. Okay? And that's about good enough. And we know that this thing extends, extends, extends. All right? It extends forever. Okay? But this here in itself should be a good indication of a diamond. And you're supposed to know the structure of this thing. No matter what kind of situations you're thrown at. You're supposed to know the situation. And the key word again is tetrahedral. Right? This is a tetrahedral shape, 
And then we have another tetrahedral shape connected to a tetrahedral, and another tetrahedral connected to this tetrahedral, and another tetrahedral here, 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 here. all the way down, all the way out there, Woo, all the way out there. Okay, so yeah, it's lots of tetrahedrals, and that's why it's a macromolecule. Cool. Now, let's talk about the properties and uses of diamonds. Boom. Appearance. Diamonds are colorless, transparent crystal that sparkle. Ooh, that's why the ladies love it. Girl's best friend, they say. So, yep, jewelry. Yep. Another property, hardness. How hard is it? Well, it's the hardest non-natural substance. So hard, it's using just drill bits, uh, saws that cut metal and glass cutters. Darn it, it's darn strong. It's really hard. Yep. And it's reason why it's hard is because of all that millions of billions and billions of covalent bonds. Yes. Density. Well, compared to graphite, carbon is more dense than graphite. And the numerical value is 3.51 grams cubic centimeters. Boom. Does it conduct electricity? No, it does not. If diamonds did conduct electricity, guess what? All the girls will be electrocuted. Well, men too. All right, all right. Now let's go on to talk about graphite. But before we do that, we're going to again draw the structure of graphite. Boom. All right. Graphite. Now graphite is a little different, okay? Graphite is noted by a hexagonal shape. So this is a top-down view of one layer of graphite, okay? It's a top-down view of one layer of graphite. Now, you may think I'm like drawing a honeycomb. <laughs> You're probably right. It kind of looks like that. But for each little kink here, it represents a carbon. A little, every little kink on the hexagon is a carbon. Okay. And this is just one layer of it. Now, and this layer extends all the way out and all the way out and all the way out there because it's a macromolecule. <laughs> all right. Now, let's just not look at all the um, atoms because it's just a, whoa, a big repetition right here. Let's just focus on this guy. All right, this carbon. Now, what have I always talked about carbon? Uh, it has four valence electrons, right? Carbon has four valence electrons, and it should form four bonds. One, two, three, four. Maximum number of bonds it can do is four single covalent bonds. Right. Look at this carbon here. How many bonds is that? It's one bond to one guy. It's bond to another guy. It's bond to another guy. Where's the fourth bond? It's not there. Well, it turns out carbon has, in graphite, has a free electron, a delocalized electron, electrons that is not stuck in a bond. And so this electron is free to move about. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Now, not only this carb, this carb graphite has um, that free electron in that configuration which I drew just now. Actually, graphite oh man, this is a terrible drawing. 
graphite is actually made out of, yeah, like the graphite in your pencils, is made out of multiple layers and layers and layers and layers of graphite sheets. Okay? Graphite sheets. And these graphite sheets are very loosely held, loosely held, by intermolecular forces. What are intermolecular forces? It is a force of attraction between two different molecules. Those forces are not strong enough to form bonds, but it is kind of there, all right? So, these two properties, the free electrons and those loosely held graphite sheets by intermolecular forces gives graphite very, some very cool properties. Let's take a look at that. For appearance, graphite looks has a very dark gray look, you know, like dull, but can, I mean, not dull, dull, dull in color, but kind of shiny, right? So it's dark gray, shiny, solid. We know that. How hard is graphite? Well, it's quite soft. The reason why it's soft is because it's made of layers. And these layers, held loosely, can slide over each other. All right, and the solid feels slippery. And this is why graphite makes great pencil leads and pencils and can be a motor lubricant. Uh, not a motor lubricant, a machinery, heavy machinery, machinery lubricant, all right? Density. Graphite is less dense than diamond. Value 2.25 grams per cubic centimeter. And because of the graphite's lone, uh, because of the graphite's free electrons, each carbon now has lots, has one free electron each. So a ton of carbons in graphite means tons of free electrons. And that free electrons means electricity. Right, it conducts electricity and it's used as electrodes in electrolysis, a thing we'll study later, and also as brushes in electric motors. That's it.